I always like to say Pulsey never grew up. He just got taller. That's what <laughs> happened right here. I've known Pulsey a long time. We toured all over the world together. Yes, we did. And lo and behold, we ended up on the same Salmon Fest bill. Pretty cool. How Isn't that wild? Is that? that was weird. She took me horseback riding with Russian cowboys in Homer, Alaska. Her dad was just telling me, I don't know how you walked the next day, remember? You were not quite born for that. You were born for this. Yes. And you do it well. <laughs> <laughs> me and Paul said, uh, anything you want to say or shall I? What do you guys want to do? We wrote this song on a marijuana drug bust in Mexico when we got to go out on a boat with some federales, and it was pretty amazing experience. Yeah, that's a short version. <laughs> I didn't want to go. I was tired. And he was like, it's three hours, door to door. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so 12 hours later, his genetic disposition disallowed him from asking directions. <laughs> yes, I think they're born that way. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> and we were lost. And we end up on this like little dirt road that was washed out and there were skeletons of cars of long past and they're long abandoned on the sides of the road and it was three in the morning and we we're running out of gas and we finally see the sign that says Rosarita's Deluxe Resort. It's not where we meant to be going, but I was glad to be getting there. We show up and it should have been called Rosarita's Plywood Palace. <laughs> Palace is stretching it, really just plywood, cubicles. And it was locked, and nobody was there. And so we did what Good Samaritans do, and we broke in, promising to pay in the morning. <laughs> and uh, we wake up the next morning. It's beautiful. We're in the Bahia de Gonzaga. Did I yeah. say that correctly? Pink sand, blue water. It was heaven, except it was a ghost town. There were belongings and houses, but no people. I mean, it's weird, right? It's weird. It was like aliens body snatched people in the middle of the night. It was eerie. So we're out of gas. We're sitting on the beach. We're wondering what we're going to do. And we're sitting there. And we're like, well, this is pretty. <laughs> and we see these, was it three or four federales? Yeah, like four of them. Four of them. And they were walking, uh, walking like towards us on the beach. Little, little four, four just dark specks. And they get closer. And I can see the sun glinting off of like, each of their belts. And they get closer, and I realize the sun is glinting off of, like, silver pistolas that are shoved into their pants, ghetto style. And then they get closer, and then I see that their shirts say federale, which is cop to you. <laughs> so they get up to us, and we ask them the obvious and pertinent question, do you know where we can get a boat to go whale watching? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they're like, see, we have a boat, you can come with us. And so we do, because we're both bright, very <laughs> smart, very smart, discerning individuals. So we get in this boat. It wasn't impressive. It was just like a little skiff with two wooden benches. And uh, I'm trying to make small talk. I don't speak any Spanish. I'm like, so what brings you guys here? And they're like, well, we're here on a drug bust. <laughs> I'm like, now? And so I'm realizing, like, while I'm using my binoculars to look for whales, they're using their binoculars to look for drug smugglers. <laughs> and every, they had, like, a bullhorn, and every boat that came by had to identify itself to our boat. But one boat didn't. One boat just sped up. And then our boat sped up. <laughs> and then that boat sped up. And then our boat sped up. And pretty soon we were on a high-speed chase on Mexican waters on my day off. <laughs> <laughs> The guys in front of us hit the shore. They get out and they start running. Uh, by this time, I'm like, can I have a like? They're, I'm sitting on this wooden bench, and it, they have me stand up. Like, senor, senor, stand up. I stand up. They open the bench, and it very conveniently doubles as a storage unit for automatic weapons. <laughs> they offer me an AR-15. I was like, no thanks. I'm trying to quit. <laughs> um, I'll take a life vest. The boat in front of us hits the sand. Four guys get out, start running. Our boat hits the sand. Our guys get out and start running. I hear a scuffle. I don't see it because I'm hugging the bottom of the boat, suddenly omni-religious, if that's such a thing. I prayed to every god that there was just to cover all bases. <laughs> and I finally hear, like, handcuffs clicking, so I figure that's got to be our guys or a kinky, you know, <laughs> drug smuggler. I don't know. So I peek my little head up, and sure enough, our guys 
apprehended the suspect and they were roughing up the suspects in hopes one of them would narc. And one did indeed. And uh, he tells us where all the drugs are hidden. And so they're going to go off a traipse through the desert right then and there and go find it. And I don't want to go. Like, I'd rather stay with the boat because I have common sense. You know? This guy, this guy's Catholic. <laughs> and it kind of means he's irresistibly drawn to anything that's wrong. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know if all Catholics are that way or it's just him at the time. I don't know. I'm not qualified to say such things. But I didn't want to save the boat by myself, so I go traipsing through the desert with him, and it was this hysterical directions of, like, you'll see a rock, and we push this rock aside. There's a huge hole, and there's, like, how much pot? 50 tons of weed. 50 tons of weed. <laughs> it was a lot of weed, dude. Now, I didn't know how they transported this much weed. Maybe you guys do, but it was an education for me. They wrapped them in little saran bricks, and they put the bricks in these uh, like gunny sacks, like potato burlap sacks. And there was so much that they couldn't carry them. And so these handcuffed drug smugglers were unhandcuffed so that they could help carry the weed back to the boat. <laughs> this is like an awesome division of labor, I felt. <laughs> so <laughs> Pulse, slight of frame, yet had the strength of 50 men <laughs> when it came to carrying these bags of weed. <laughs> I've never seen him so spry. So invigorated, so empowered. He had bags on each shoulder, and he was dragging one with his big toe, and he was just like, and I was dragging a half-empty one through the desert with no sunscreen on. So we finally get up. There's so much weed. We have to, we have to pack both boats, and they're like barely floating. And the federales are stoked. It turns out, I'm like, so why is the town evacuated? And they're like, because it is so dangerous here. We had to evacuate the village. I'm like, this is genius. <laughs> so <laughs> they've been camped out with an evacuated village for six months. And today, that day was the first day they found any drug activity with us in tow. <laughs> so they're stoked and they're high-fiving each other like, Jewel, senora, you're like a good luck charm. There's going to be a party tonight. Do you want to come? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I bet there is. Yeah, just throw some on the fire and everybody stand downwind. <laughs> I was always really conservative because I grew up bar singing where I saw a lot of bad stuff go down. And so I just kind of wanted out of there. I thought we would get framed somehow and I'd spend the rest of my life defending Steve in a Tijuana prison cell because he's always been kind of, you know, pretty. <laughs> and so I was like, no, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll just be going. And Pultz, of course, being the good, you know, Catholic Samaritan that he is, wanted to help unload the boat. <laughs> so we do that, and then the Federale is like, Steve, you've been so helpful. Would you like some? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like time stood still in slow-mo, and I was like, no. <laughs> and Steve was like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I've replayed this moment in my life so many times. Like, what was Steve thinking at that moment? Like, he didn't see a federale in a third world country holding an automatic weapon and a large hunting knife offering him contraband in a, you know, in a country with no witnesses. <laughs> That's not what he saw, I don't think. No. I think what he saw, I mean, I think he had Catholic, like, Pope goggles on. <laughs> and I think he didn't see a federale. I think he saw the Pope. And he said unto Steve, Steve, partake. <laughs> Say three Hail Marys, and you will be forgiven. And it was like the clouds parted, a sunbeam came down, angels sang. He reached a hand in the federale, the pope, whatever he was, ripped open the sack. And Steve just grabbed a little out, and he looked that man full in the eye, tears brimming, staring slightly longer than a full-grown full, full man ought to. And he said, thank you. <laughs> and the federale was like, take more. And I'm like, I'm like, do you have to have a certain amount on you to be framed? Like, I'm just waiting for people to jump out of the bushes and grab us. So Steve takes a huge handful. 
we turn around and we walk away. And uh, I'm waiting for us to be apprehended. And then this suburban shows up out of nowhere. Did yeah. it seem spotless to you or was that just my memory? It was spotless. Now, this is 50 miles of dirt road, this <laughs> black suburban travel down. How it got spotless, I will never know. And they opened up the back and we put all the drugs in. And then we ended up getting a picture of me holding like an AR-15. And he had the kilo at this point. <laughs> and uh, we got pictures. If you go to his website, it's poltz.com, P-O-L-T-Z.com. You can see the picture. I look 12. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, we ended up staying. I made him give the weed away. He gave it to the cook named Rosa, who said, no, no, OK, but just for my arthritis. <laughs> so we ended up staying. They gave us gas. We wrote three songs. Two of them were fairly sucky, but one was good. And uh, we both kind of wanted to record it on our record. And we <laughs> were kind of fighting over it. And we got done with this gig in the gas, light dish, gas lamp district. Yeah. That's been so long ago. Oh, yeah. And we would get tacos afterwards at this, like, La Posta number eight. Do I have it right? Yes. Woo! I'm on a roll. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking a lot. I got a little excited. Memory lane. <laughs> so we would go get tacos at 2 a.m. at this little outdoor taco stand in San Diego. Well, the only people that frequent taco stands at 2 a.m. are who? Musicians and prostitutes. You guessed it. <laughs> so we're sitting there eating some taquitos with some local working girls. And I finally had this genius idea. Now, mind you, this is before American Idol. So this was actually a real genius idea, OK? It was future thinking. I decided we would both sing the songs for the ladies of the evening. And we would let them decide who sung it best. And they could decide who got to keep the song for their record. <laughs> and the prostitutes chose me. <laughs> <laughs> And I put it on my record, and it became a big hit. It was crazy. Did you ever think that would happen? Everything she said is true. Seriously. And the prostitutes picked her version of it. And what they said was, honey, that white boy can't sing. <laughs> you can sing, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. We traveled all over the world. Did you think this song would be a hit? No. I hated it when I wrote it a little bit. Did you? Really? Yeah, I thought it was kind of cheesy. Wow. Did you? Well, I wasn't sure about it. I was glad we wrote it, and uh, it was like the gift that kept on giving. It was like an endowment from the arts. <laughs> it paid for my flight up here to Alaska. <laughs> that song sent my parents on an Alaskan cruise. <laughs> it bought my 88-year-old dad a MacBook Pro. <laughs> I bought Salmon Fest today. Because of this song. I'm the new owner. It's going to be called Poltz Best. Go for it. You want to sing the second verse? I hear the clock. It's 6 a.m. I feel so far from where I've been. I got my eggs and my pancakes too. Got the maple syrup, everything but you. I break the yolks and make a smiley face. Kind of like it in my brand new place. I wipe the spots up of a mirror. Don't leave the keys in the bowl. Never put wet towels on the floor anymore. my ma but she was out for a walk I consoled a cup of coffee but it didn't want to talk picked up the paper it was more bad news more hearts being broken more people being used put on my coat in the pouring rain I saw a movie but it wasn't the same it was happy Man, I was sad It made me miss you Oh, so bad Cause Dreams last for so long Even after you're gone And I know That you love me And soon You will see You were meant for me And I 
Brush my teeth, I put the cap back on. I know you hate it when I leave the lights on. So pick up a car and turn the sheets down. Take a deep breath and good look around. Put all my peaches and I hop in the bed. I'm half alive, but I feel mostly dead. Tell myself that I'll be alright. I shouldn't think anymore tonight, cause dreams last so long, even after you're gone. I know that you love me, and soon you'll see you were meant for me. Ladies and gentlemen. What record do you have out right now? Where can they buy it? <laughs> 